Hello everyone, this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Decap Attack on the Sega Genesis, and it was released in 1991 in North America, and it was developed by Vic Tokai and published by Sega, and it's an action platformer, very similar to Psycho Fox and Kid Cool, and the character that you play as in this game is a mummy named Chuck D. Head. Get it? Because it's like Chuck D. Head, like you're chucking your head at someone and that's what you do in the game. Yep, there's gonna be more terrible puns in this game. But anyways, the story in this game goes a little bit like this. So Chuck D. Head has been resurrected by a mad scientist named Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah, that's actually the way how it's spelled. And the main villain of the game, Max Decap, has his underworld armor and they're fucking everything up. In fact, they even split the island apart because apparently the island looks like a skeleton and you wouldn't see that on your world map. And that's pretty much the whole story, you're just a mummy guy who has to kill another guy. Now it may not be like the most fleshed out thing ever, hey get it fleshed out? Okay yeah that's stupid. But anyways, it's an alright story for what it is, I mean I'm not suspecting much out of it, but it's at least there. So in this game, you can jump, you can attack with your eyeballs, sometimes you'll randomly pick up a head and you can throw that at people, and if you keep on pressing the jump button in midair you can like slow yourself down from falling. I'd say it's pretty useful. And you have this inventory screen where whatever items you pick up, you can use them here. Like, there are different random abilities that you have, such as, like, jumping higher, running faster, and brief invincibility. But there are more other various things. Now, let's take a look at the controls. And I have to say, the controls are really good and responsive. The jumping and attacking is easy. I don't have very much complaints about the basic gameplay controls, but there is one annoying thing that I will address. The button that is not your jumping or attacking is the inventory button, and the reason why I think it's annoying that they put that there is because I think that should be the start button. Also, sometimes I'll like press it randomly by accident, and that can get annoying, but thankfully it doesn't happen too often, but still, I think it should have been the start button rather than one of the other buttons. But thankfully you can map out the button layouts on your controller within the options. But other than that, I don't have much complaints at all. Now as for the graphics in this game, I think they actually look really nice. There are some nice colors, cool details, and I really like the overall theme of the game. So there's not a whole lot to say about the graphics because they're just really good for 1991. Now as for the music in this game, I think it's pretty cool and it's pretty catchy. It also suits the theme very well. Now it may not be like my most favorite Sega Genesis soundtrack, but it's just right for this kind of game. But however, I really do like the intro theme. I can see someone making a metal cover out of that song. But overall, the music is pretty good. Now one thing I will mention is that this game is pretty tough, considering that the levels are really huge for what they are. Now I do like the fact that the levels are pretty big, but there was one thing that threw me off when I first played this game. There'll be some levels where you're gonna have to find a random object, and if you go to the goalpost without finding the object, then it tells you to go back and find it. Now when I first played this game, that really pissed me the fuck off. Mainly because it says nothing about finding an object, so I was like, oh, what the fuck, really? How was I supposed to fucking know that? Now, maybe if I had the manual, I would have known, but since I don't, well, yeah, how was I supposed to fucking know that? But thankfully, they're not that hard to find. You just had to break open these pots and you find them. But a little bit of instructions before the mission starts would have been nice. But once you know that, then you won't have that problem ever again. Just make sure to check all the pots that you can. Other than that, this game is still pretty challenging, but it's not like the hardest game you'll ever play on the Genesis, but it's still pretty challenging enough. Now, if you want to buy this game, it's going to cost around $8 to $19. Now, I got my loose card for $9.99, so at least I didn't do too bad on that. But still, it's a fairly cheap game, and I have seen it a couple times before, so you shouldn't have any issues finding it. Or you could just get Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection, which has this game in it and a shit ton of others. But whatever suits your needs, as long as you're getting this game involved, it's a good thing. Now, if I were to rate this game, I'd have to give it a 7 out of 10. It's a pretty good platforming action game, and it has a good reasonable challenge, but it's mostly a fun game. I did think about giving it an 8 out of 10 instead, but since like of those complaints that I made, I think a 7 out of 10 is just fair as it is. And I know they're just small little things, but still, it's still a great game. And I'd say it's worth checking out. But now, time for some fun fact. Now, did you know that the original Japanese version of this game was actually nothing like this game at all? In fact, it was based off an anime called Magical Hat, which I had never heard of before. And the game's title was Magical Hat Flying Turbo Adventure. Okay, that's a bit of a mouthful. 
So yes, the original game had nothing to do with a mummy throwing his head at people. So pretty much everything about it was different, whether it comes from the graphics, the music, and the settings, and all that good stuff. But still, who would have thought that this game was originally based off of something that was entirely different though? I know I never would have suspected that. So there's your fun fact about this game. Maybe you've already known this already, or maybe you didn't. Well, if you're watching this, well now you know. But either way, this is still a pretty good game. So without further ado, let's end this review. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and commenting.